Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AGX Media. Our guest today has always been a silver bull, but he's never been quite as bullish as he is today. Gary Goggins, the editor of the Silver Stock Analyst, is now eyeing triple-digit silver, and he says it's not a question of if, but when. But first, guys, if this is your first time joining us, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It's people like you that are making the silver money revolution happen. Welcome, Garrett, to the show. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now, uh, triple digit silver, that's a long way from where we are presently. It's about, we're presently about halfway from silver's all time high of $50. So uh, you have to give me some insight here. What do you see as the path for the metal? Um, you know, I've been covering the silver sector for 10 years, uh, focused on the silver equities, the miners. So, you know, they produce silver as well as, you know, gold, lead and zinc and copper. You know, and they sell it. So their revenue is dependent upon, you know, a silver price. And, you know, what we do at Silver Stock Analysts is we look for miners that can um, add value irregardless of the silver price. So, um, you know, they can do that through exploration. They can do that through uh, lowering costs, increase in offering cash flow, uh, you know, good investments, stuff like that. But, you know, since I've been in the sector for a little bit, you know, I've seen a couple cycles and, you know, we've undergone a few years of lower silver prices and it's not very exciting and there's really no, nothing to get it going. And I was not the biggest bear on silver over the past couple of years, few years, but what's happened in 2020 has been absolutely off the charts. You know, they, they print they, that bill that they passed for $2 trillion. Um, they're probably going to do another one soon and then another one next year. Uh, once they start printing money like this, uh, they're not going to stop. You know, whoever, whichever politician promises, you know, the most, most money, most payments, then that, you know, that's the politician that's going to, you know, lead the election. But, you know, all this stimulus is really good for silver. And in 2008, the Fed's balance sheet, because the Fed were buying assets to support the financial markets, went from um, like, went from two trillion to three trillion. Uh, this time already, it's gone from four trillion to seven trillion. So that's three trillion dollars. And you know, a trillion dollars is an extraordinary uh, um, large amount of money, and we're just throwing them around like quarters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you see, this is the the justification as to uh, how we get from where we presently are to uh, that massive triple digit number for silver. You also wrote recently in your newsletter about how a Biden will bold well for the metal with his plans for green energy, solar panel, panel and power, and, mm. and the fact that a lot of silver is used in, in modern electronics. But if the Senate stays Republican, how can he pass legislation forward? And does that change your forecast? No doubt. Um, you know, it'd be tough getting, you know, a big uh, Democratic spending bill through. Um, you know, it would be, um, it'd be challenging to say the least. But, you know, the trend towards green energy, you know, it's going to continue whether, you know, they want to spend a hundred trillion dollars, ridiculous amount, or even two trillion dollars, but it doesn't even have to be that big. But just the whole trend towards, um, you know, green renewable energy, um, it's going to continue. You know, the U.S. wants to uh, double your usage um, of solar over the next few years. There's 20 grams of silver in each solar panel. And then one other major trend that isn't going to change anytime soon is um, silver and electronics. You know, you get your headphones, you get your cell phone, you get your uh, computer screens, and you get your automobiles, and they all have silver in them. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the push towards technology um, and digitalization, it's, it's going to continue and it's going to be good for silver. Absolutely. So would you, would you argue this is why you have a preference for silver over gold or what is your, what is your reasoning there? Yeah, well, um, we look at silver, silver is basically gold and steroids and you know, the mining business and the metals business, it's a cyclical business. It goes up, it goes down, you know, um, over time, um, you know, it, it's tough to generate, you know, consistent value for the miners. You know, gold's done a good job increasing, you know, year after year after year. But what happens is if you time it right, if you time the cycle right, silver explodes. And, you know, I sent out an email on the exact bottom of the low that, you know, load up in silver at $12 an ounce earlier this year in March. Um, you know, and it was the right thing to do. And silver went quickly to $30 an ounce. Um, so it tripled and gold, you know, is only a, a, a percentage of that. So, you know, silver is more volatile. Some of the good silver companies, you can look at them as, you know, silver options with no time decay. Um, um, so you can hold them in your portfolio. And then when silver explodes, these miners explode. And, you know, to be honest with you, what we've seen over the past quarter, 
the average silver price over the third quarter was was such a big jump from the second quarter that the miners uh, free cash flow and profitability exploded and all the silver miners this quarter uh, they had the best quarter of profitability basically ever so these miners are in a good spot and you know silver's done a good job staying up here Fantastic. Thank you for that insight. Now, um, I have, a, I have a, a philosophical question for you. There's a movement by some to see silver restored as a monetary asset, as, a, uh, as actual money, as a medium of exchange. What are your, what are your thoughts on, uh, on this? Yeah, no, I, you know, I don't see any chance um, of that happening. You know, it has been, you know, money in the past. And in fact, you know, um, you know I, I've been looking closely at a, a company, a silver mining company, that does business in Bolivia. And um, there's a town there, a city called Potosi. And Potosi has got a mine there called Cerro Rico. Cerro Rico financed the Spanish empire for 500 years. Back in the, um, back in the day, the three largest cities in the world were Paris, London, and Potosi. And that's when silver was, you know, money. That's when it was a day. Uh, but, you know, we're not going back to, you know, money that's basically backed by anything. Um, but the government's going to continue spending. You need to protect yourself through, you know, converting your dollars, which depreciate every single day into something physical like silver. Absolutely. So then what are your thoughts on, uh, digital blockchain assets, uh, and, and stable coins that choose to back, uh, their, 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 uh, tokens with, um, a metal or some other kind of collateral? Yeah, I tell you what, um, you know, I bought silver um, before and held it physically. And if you have a decent amount of money and you're putting it into silver, um, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you got to store it somewhere. You're afraid someone's going to steal it. You got to go haggle with the uh, dealer that you're buying it from to buy it and sell it. And it's hard to convert back into money. Uh, but the storage, you know, it, it feels fills up boxes and some people paint them black and use them as door stops or, you know, your silver bars or whatever. But uh, to be honest with you, one of the beauties of um, the crypto assets and the blockchain assets is it eliminates all that storage for you uh, because you're holding them, you know, on the blockchain. So you can, you know, hold it uh, basically on a, you know, ledger device or hold it wherever you want. And you could have $10 million on there and no one would ever know. So, you know, um, it definitely makes sense to have, you know, a, um, you know, stable coin, uh, you know, backed by silver. But the, the big thing with, um, you know, these is the um, convertibility into physical and um, the custody. You need to make sure that, you know, the entity has, you know, the silver there because you get assets like the SLV, which is the ETF. Uh, they charge a, you know, percentage fee every year. Um, and then, you know, who knows if they actually own the silver or they just own paper that, you know, will give them the right to it. Because, you know, if the silver price really gets going as it did earlier this year, you know, they had a run on gold at the Colmex. Um, and, you know, it's very likely the same thing could happen with silver. Absolutely makes perfect sense. You know, transparency is a huge and very important piece, I think, of the digital uh, metals and any asset, really. Um, I think it's just such a core central piece that you need to have the confidence that they actually say have what they say they have. Mm -hmm. um, Garrett, thank you so much for your insights today. That's all we've got for you. Um, are there any closing words you'd like to leave our audience with? Um, you know, like I said, you know, silver is a cyclical business. Um, you know, Friday was a great day. Silver was up large. It came in Monday um, with supposedly a cure for COVID. Silver was down large. It's a volatile metal. Uh, but, you know, um, all the central banks and especially the Fed, they've got your back and they're continuing to print. Silver is going to be higher over the next few years. We're right in the sweet spot, you know, for silver investing. Well said. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us again today on AGXM. Again, if this is your first time, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to read more on the works of Garrett Goggins, please check out the Silver Stock Analyst. Take care, guys. Thanks, Nick.